Hey guys, up in the Sacramento mountains today, uh, they had an awesome snowfall, out. Well, awesome, second snowfall of the year, um, maybe two or three inches maybe, a little deeper in some places where the snow drifts, etc. Um, up here having some family time and getting a chance to practice some tracking uh, in the snow, fresh snow, it's great, you lot of squirrel, deer, I think that, that wasn't a deer, that was definitely an elk. Uh, going that way. So we're, I'm out here getting to do that. Made a little fire as a family and whatnot. And today's video is about the one very simple piece of kit. Doesn't necessarily have to be what I have, but just this, this piece of kit as a whole. So before we get into that, sponsors of today's video are Brownells, Good Camo, Nautilus Ammunitions, and more. All the links and discount codes to the sponsor slash channel affiliates are on my link tree in the bio on my Instagram, bush underscore plaid. Thank you to those companies and those individuals who support the channel, help me grow it and, and make it into what it is. Give me a chance to get out and do stuff utilizing different camouflages and gear. So thank you to all of them. All right. All right. So the simple piece of kit that I want to talk about where I think no matter, it's getting cold now, right? It's getting into the colder seasons. Where it's the cold season, cooler months, <clears throat> and I know not everybody's environment dictates it, but as the way that we talked about before about having um, somewhat uniform IFACs amongst groups or individuals, etc., so should survival gear. Gone over primitive methods before, gone over the, the tiny tools, the three things I keep on my person, um, regardless of my kit. I don't like cliche phrase of mission set, but like that. Um, so one of the things that I think is important, whether you have it on in your chest rig, in a pocket, in your day, uh, salt pack, day pack, ruck, wherever, as an emergency, specifically for the cooler months, is an emergency reflective blanket. Now it doesn't have to be, this is one of those thicker ones that has a like OD green, backing to it um so you can utilize it you could utilize it as uh you could utilize it as like something against thermal um uh, the roof to a shelter or something like that it's not just the reflective blanket itself um so why do you keep one of these just this is kind of the reason the reasoning behind why i suggest having this in your kit during the cold months i'm sorry it's cold, it's like 20, 22 degrees out. I'm a little chilly. Um, I'm trying to think straight, hold on. Cold, well, this is one of the things. When your body gets too cold, you don't, you, you start making wrong decisions, you can't think straight, and that can cause critical, detrimental decisions that, um, that can, you can end up dead. That's, that's the bottom line of it, you can end up dead if you, if you're too cold, if you don't have a way to keep yourself from getting in a hypothermic state, you're fucked. You are. Okay? Plain and simple. So, this is, if it's about this big, I could probably get a little smaller. You know the little foil ones, the square ones that are super thin material? Those ones are the ones that you kind of want to work for. Or what, what, those are the kind, those ones will work for any situation, but not building a shelter or, or something like that. Uh, it's it's primarily for reflecting body heat. Um, the reason why hypothermia catches you catches you off guard, whether you're soaking wet, it's 20 degrees and windy or whatnot. But the human body can only drop you know, uh, 80 80 not um, 98.6 degrees is normal human body temperature. And if you just drop three degrees to around 94 95, that's pretty. It, it it's getting that's the first stages of hypothermia, about three degrees. That's the first stages. Once you get below 90, that's the da that's a danger zone. Like if you do not get somebody's core body temperature back up, it's like when somebody has a fever. You don't want a fever to go over 104. 105 is very dangerous, but you don't want your temperature to go over, temperature to go over 104 because, because it'll melt your brain. The, the, Liter melt your brain, melt your brain. Um, so 
you want to you you want it's the, it's the same when it comes to comes to hypothermia. Once you get below 90, it's really 88 degrees. It's not that that's the, not the point of no return, but your core body your core body temperature is so cold that it's it's going to then be if if your core is 88, that means your extremities are going to be a lot colder, which means that your heart is going to be pumping cold or um, colder blood to it, which can cause ca cardiac arrest. So just you won't actually freeze your heart, but it'll stop your heart, slow your heart down because it's so cold because the heart's a muscle. It needs to stay warm to beat. When you, when you get cold, like right now I'm cold, what's happening? My muscles are contracting. That's what would happen if your cold blood from your extremities came to your heart with a colder core temperature. That's why like when you are doing cold weather operations, survival, whatever, however you want to put it, camping, backpacking, you always want to put like warm, uh, the hot hands, the hot hands, like the sticky ones that are body sized or your water bottles near your core to keep your core warm. Because as long as you can keep the core warm, it will pump warm blood to the bodies now to the body and the extremities. Now, how warm it'll keep your hands and your toes and whatnot, that all that kind of depends on your cardiovascular health. That's a different that's a different topic all in of it all by itself. But all I the video is have a reflective blanket, whether it be something like this, it's about as small as I could probably if I if I wrapped it, I could probably get it small. Something like this, the simple two dollar ones that you see that come in every like cheap first aid kit. Just something like that where you know where it is. The trick is when you're gonna use one, whether your clothes are warm or uh, whether your clothes are dry or wet, you want to strip down to basically your skivvies. Like if, if right now, if I were to do it, with the snow on the ground, I just have my chest rig and my rifle, so I don't have a day pack or a ruck with me. But if I had to right now, I would strip down to my skivvies, I'd lay my my camis, I'd lay my clothes on the top of the snow, maybe try and, depending on how freezing and frigid I am, swoosh, swoosh the snow down to the ground, lay my camis on the ground, and then I'm in my skivvies, roll up in this and lay on top of the camis so that I'm not laying directly on the ground so that my clothes give me a bit of a buffer, I guess, kind of like an ISO mat. Um, and that's, I mean, that is the most basic form of trying to get your body, uh, your body temperature up, keeping it up. You have to, it, that's, that's why with all the military sleep systems that they issue you, they say to just wear socks and your skivvy, like your shorts and a t-shirt. Because if you over layer, your body heat can't, can't escape from your clothes and it doesn't utilize the sleeping bags properly. Same concept with the reflective. If you keep the clothes on, your skin is gonna be absorbed, your the clothing's gonna be absorbing the warmth and, and the therm th thermal heat coming off of you. Your clothes are gonna be getting that, and it's gonna be a barrier between just the reflective. You want the reflective. That's all you need. You just skin to it, and it'll work. So that's just today's video, quick. Might have sound a little rambly. Have an emergency reflective blanket in your day kit, in your pockets, your pack. Have a couple of them if, during a cold weather scenario because that is that is the easiest way to bring up your core body temperature. All right? So I'm going to go do a little more tracking. We're going to go get some pizza at the brewery. All right. Y'all have a good one. Thanks.